In this video, we'll state the logistic model, and then we'll try to analyze the logistic model without solving it. The first example of something I've said that we frequently want to do in differential equations. The logistic model is based on the following observation. For a wide range of animal species, birth rates decline as the populations grow. And because it's true for such a wide range of species, from some types of insects to humans, we're not going to be able to find a one-size-fits-all explanation for this phenomenon. Let's let the birth rate be a linear decreasing function of the population. And this assumption is certainly wrong, um, but it also gives us a fairly simple model that we can analyze. Going back to what I said about mathematical models, there are always trade-offs involved, accuracy versus usability. Also accuracy versus generality. The way that birth rates decline as population grows is going to vary from species to species. So if we try to be very accurate, we'll go from a model that works maybe okay for a lot of species to a model that only that works well, but maybe only applies to one or two species. So our hope is that this inaccurate assumption isn't so inaccurate that we can't get anything useful from it. Our death rate will be constant, delta sub zero. And plugging these into the general population model. It's our birth rate minus our death rate times the population. This is separable as it happens, and we will solve it. But for now, let's approach our stated goal of trying to get some understanding of this system without explicitly solving for P. This is called the logistic model. 
Assuming that two conditions are satisfied, we need beta zero minus delta zero to be greater than zero. And we need beta one to be greater than zero. And what do each of these requirements mean, um, beta one being greater than zero just ensures that this thing that looks like subtraction really is subtraction. If beta one were negative, the birth rate would be increasing. Beta zero is the maximum birth rate, although it doesn't make a lot of sense to talk about it quite like this. It's the birth rate when P equals zero. As P grows, the birth rate decreases. So the statement that beta zero minus delta zero is greater than zero is the statement that at some point, the birth rate is greater than the death rate. This population is not just instantly going extinct due to the fact that more animals are dying than are being born. So these are both good assumptions to make. And the logistic model is usually rewritten a bit. We'll first pull a beta one out of these parentheses to get beta one P. And this beta zero and this delta zero didn't have beta one terms in them. So pulling it out, is equivalent to adding this term to a denominator. Beta one P has this beta one. When we pull it out, P remains. And if we're not going to solve this equation, at least not yet, What can we say about it? What information can we glean? There are two places where the derivative of the population with respect to time is zero. One of them is a P equals zero. If P equals zero, this product is zero and the entire derivative is zero. And that makes sense. If P equals zero, the population has gone extinct and it remains at zero forever neither increasing or decreasing. There's another point where the derivative equals zero. The point where this term equals zero, P is beta zero, minus delta zero over beta one. 
And this value doesn't have the clear real world meaning that extinction had. But if the population were ever equal to this, the derivative would be zero, the population would stop changing in size, and the population would just sit here forever. And now let's ask, when is the population increasing? This is a calculus exercise. The population is increasing if and only if the derivative is greater than zero. The derivative is greater than zero if and only if this is greater than zero. That's because beta one P has to be positive. Beta one is positive, population is never negative. So you have this positive term times this. And a positive term times a positive term is positive. A positive term times a negative term is negative. So this is positive and the population is increasing if and only if this is greater than zero, which is true if and only if the population is less than this fraction. And this fraction you see up here, it's where the derivative is zero. So what if the population falls within this interval? Then the derivative is zero and the population increases. The population grows. And at this point, the population is not changing. So the population gets closer and closer to this point. And if it reaches it, it stops growing. It just sits here forever now. The converse to this question is when is the population decreasing? And if the population is increasing, if and only if it's less than this number, the population is decreasing. If and only if it's greater. than this number. So if the population is over here, the population is shrinking. And as the population shrinks, it gets closer and closer to this value. 
And when it reaches this value, it stops changing because the derivative here is zero. So if the population is initially small, it grows until it reaches this value. If the population is initially large, it shrinks until it reaches this value. But either way, the population changes until it reaches this value, then stops changing. And this value is called the carrying capacity. So without separating variables and without solving a differential equation, we have figured out what will happen to this animal population over time. It will either increase if it's initially small or it will decrease if it's initially large until it reaches its carrying capacity, and then it will remain at its carrying capacity as time goes forward. And this, of course, in spite of the assumption of linearity here, not being an act assumption, this is what you see frequently in nature. I mean, if you look at a deer population, for example, that population probably isn't growing exponentially, and it's probably not going extinct. Rather, a forest supports so many deer, and that is the number of deer that live in the forest. The population neither grows nor shrinks.